But this video is going to have a lot. Number 23 and number 24. All kinds of apps, all kinds of functions and features. All right, so I have for 23, three graph functions. G, H, and the graph of X. First, I just want to find what is F of 4. So F is the graph here. F of 4, that X is, or the 4 is in the parentheses, so it's an X value. So I go to where the X is 4 on the graph, go up, the output is 1. B is also equally a symbol, G of 8. That 8 is in the parentheses, so I'm going to put 8 in for X in G. So 4 times 8 minus 7. Well, 4 times 8 is 32, and 32 minus 7 is 25. All right, same thing, h of negative 2. Well, that negative 2 is in the parentheses, that's an x. I'm going to put it in for h up here. So of negative 3 times x is negative 2 squared plus 1. Now make sure, we've talked about this in other videos. If I'm squaring a negative, you must put it in parentheses. And then what I'm going to do is just type that straight into my calculator. Don't even worry about trying to break the arithmetic down. Just type negative 3 times negative 2, the quantity squared, plus 1 into your calculator. Hit enter and it will give you the output of negative 11. Alright, and D can find some things. F of negative 1. So if I find F of negative 1 here, it's using my graph to the negative 1, my output is negative 2. And I need to find G of negative 3. Okay, so I use G up here. I put negative 3 in press. So 4 times negative 3 minus 7, which will give me an output of, see, let's see, negative 12 minus 7 is negative 19. So what they're asking me to do is to take F of negative 1 times G of negative 3. So you have negative 2 times negative 19 which is 38. All right, for E, find X, given that F of X is 2. Now, that 2 is not in the parentheses, so it's not an X value. I also know it's not X because they're asking you to find all the Xs. So I'm not going to ask you to find the Xs when I gave it to you. That 2 is a Y value, an output. So go to the graph of 2. I like to draw on my graph here. If I go to 2 and I draw a line across, I can see there are 1, 2, 3 x values that give me that output or that y value of 2. Those x's are at 5, 9, and 13. All right, f and g. Did I skip an E? I did. Let's see. Maybe it... We'll write it down in a minute. We'll do, we'll do the other E on this back slide here. The second E. Alright, so E told us... Maybe it was on this slide and I missed it? No. Okay. We'll do it right here. You never know. Sorry, guys. So that E is find X. For g of x equal to 2. So same as what we just did in the first e that misnumbered, that 2 is an output. It's a y value. If I need to find the x value that gives me that 2, I'm going to set the equation of g, the function of g, equal to 2. What input for this x gives me the answer of 2? And I'm just going to solve it for x. So I'll add 7 to both sides, get 4x equals 9. And then divide by 4. So the input here is going to be 9 over 4. You're welcome to leave that as a fraction, or you can turn it into a decimal. All right, so both E's, let's do F. Find F, given that, oh, apparently I just did that. I don't know. I'm losing my mind, you guys. So we just did that. It was X equals 9 over 4. I guess I renumbered it on here and not on mine. All right. G, 4 times H is 1, minus 6 times F is 0. What I would do first is break it down and find H of 1 to start. Right? I'm going to find H of 1 and find F of 0. Now, 
now h of 1, but 1 into the function of h up here. So I'll have negative 3 times 1 squared plus 1, which will give me negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. I'm also going to find f of 0. Okay, f of 0 uses my graph. Go to x is 0. My output is negative 3. So here's what I'm going to do. I put that negative 2 and negative 3 into the expression. 4 times h of 1 minus 6 times f of 0. Now, if you don't want to do the math there, you can just type that expression right into your calculator. It's not too hard, though. I'll have negative 8 plus 18, which is 10. All right, let's do g. Or H, I'm sorry, I'm all on this number. You're not on this number. 2 G of X plus H of X minus F of 0. All right, well, the only number input I have here is F of 0. So let's find F of 0 we said is negative 3. So what we have here, to be careful, is that I have my input, so my values are in terms of X for the most part. So my output, my answer, my final answer is going to be in terms of X. So I have 2 times the function g of x plus the function of h of x minus f of 0. So I have 2 minus times there. Be really careful. All I have to do is distribute collect right terms, and I'm good to go. So I'm going to distribute the 2 and get 8x minus 14. Nothing changes here. I just have a plus, so I'll have minus 3x squared plus 1. This minus a negative turns into a positive 3. I'm going to put my answer in standard form, meaning I'm going to start with the highest x form first. So I have negative 3x squared, so I use that guy, plus 8x. And then I have a bunch of times minus 14 plus 1 plus 3 will give me minus 10. I think that looks great. Alright, let's talk about some features. Domain and range. We're going to use set builder notation for this one. Now remember, set builder notation uses your curly bracket. And when I do domain, domain is x's. And I want all the x's such that, that's what bar means, the x's are between, well here, this x of negative 2 and 16. So my inequality within here will be from negative 2 to 16. X goes in the middle, and because I have closed dots on either end, I'm going to fill in with less than or equal to zero. My range is going to be done in a similar fashion. I still have my curly bracket, the letter Y, such that I want all the Y's. Now, the lowest Y value is here. That's at negative 4. The highest Y value is up here at 3. The letter Y goes in the middle, and again, there's closed dots. So I have less than or equal to. All right, let's do some relative and the absolute maximum. So an absolute maximum is the highest point on the graph. For this graph, it looks like that absolute that maximum is right here at 7, 3. I have to write that as an ordered pair, like the direction, okay? Absolute minimum is the lowest point on the graph which is going to be at 16, negative 4. Um, relative minimum. Now, relative minimum are your turning points that are low turning points, or valleys. So my low turning points here are at 0, negative 3. And then also, it looks like I have one here at 11, 1. Those are my relative minimum. And relative maxima are my mountain top turning points that are highest points. Now, that is the same point we already used, 7, 3. Your absolute max can also be a relative maximum, and then also at 13, 2. Be careful. End point cannot be relative maxima or minimum. They're not turning points. Relative maximums or minimums have to be turning points. All right, same graph. Interval of increase. Now it says just list one. I'm going to list all of them. Um, interval of increase. 
So let's see, that's where our graph is going up from left to right. So we're increasing here, we're increasing here. You can use an inequality or interval notation. Here, I'm going to use interval notation. I'll write the inequality above it though. I could use the x value because we're saying what interval of the domain. Remember, we've talked about that in class. So the interval of the domain, the domain is x's, that's increasing is from 0 to this turning point of 7. Remember, you use the x values of the turning points. It's from turning point to turning point where are you increasing. Now, I've told you that my preference is that we use parentheses here for intervals. You can use square brackets if you want. If you wrote an inequality, it'd be 0 is less than x is less than 7. We are also increasing over here from 11 to 13. You could write this interval as well. And I like to use that little math symbol of union to join both intervals. You only need it to state one of them, so one of those two should be on your paper. Um, one interval of decrease. Well, I'm going to list them all again. But decrease here, I have one, two, three parts of my graph that are going down. So I look at what part of the domain are you decreasing on. So that's from negative two to this x value of zero. Right? That's one interval that I'm decreasing on. I'm also decreasing from seven to eleven. And then finally from 13 to the last x value here of 16. Right? Remember, interval of the domain. So use the x values from the turning point. Turning point to turning point. Uh, last part here, this one can get kind of tricky. On what interval is f of x greater than or equal to 0? That 0 is the y. Of the y value of 0, where are you greater than? than or equal to zero. Well, if I'm at zero here, greater than would be everything up above. So that whole part in yellow is actually greater than zero. You don't even need, like I could block off this underneath part here. That one didn't work. So I only need this part that's right up above. Okay, I don't need anything underneath that all goes less than zero. So greater than or equal to, this is where symbols matter. I start at 3. Now, because I'm equal to 0, I'm actually equal to 0 at x equals 3. So I need a bracket there. And I'm greater than 0 all the way until I get to 14. Or again, I'm also equal to 0. If this were to have just said greater than 0, then I would have had to use parentheses for this interval. But since I did greater than or equal to, I'm using the square bracket. All right, let's look at 24. Similar, but different graph. What's the y-intercept? That should be really easy. Give me one. 0, 0. Using interval notation this time, what's the domain and range? Well, interval domain for domain. Interval notation for domain. So my leftmost x is at negative 6. There's an open dot there, so I use a parenthesis. On the right, there's an arrow going to the right, which means I'm going to infinity, out this way forever. My range goes bottom to top, smallest y to big x. And on the bottom, there's an arrow. So I'm going down to negative infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. And the highest y value is up there at 8 with a square bracket because there's a point including it in the graph. We're saying relative maximum and minimum. So relative, again, is turning points, not endpoints. Or relative maximums here. So I want the mountain top. So that'd be negative 4, 8. And the other one here would be 2, 4. Those are your turning points of relative maximum. Now, relative minimums are your valleys, or the low turning point. There's only one here, and that's a zero. List intervals where the function's increasing. All right, remember, we're going from turning point to turning point. So I'm here to here, or end point to turning point, increasing there. All right, so the interval where the function's increasing. So the x values that we're increasing on, well, this is from negative 6 to negative 4. Now, I use parentheses when I do the interval. 
However, I said you can use square brackets. If you use a square bracket here, you would have to make sure you still use a parenthesis with negative six because it has an open dot. If you use a square bracket, it can only be on the negative four. The other interval of increase would be, I'll use a union there. That looks kind of fun to make Would, oh, from zero to two. Alright, interval for the function is decreasing. Let's see, one, I have two. So decreasing here, I'm decreasing from negative four to zero. And also, again, starting at two, but be careful, I'm decreasing forever. I'm decreasing all the way as the axis goes out this way towards infinity. Don't put negative infinity because the arrow is going down. That's the Y. The X's are going out forever to the right. So that's why we have an infinity. Infinity always has to have a parenthesis. All right, let me erase this graph to make it so we can look at the next couple questions. It says, what is the maximum value of M of X? So the maximum is the highest. The maximum value is not looking for an ordered pair, it's looking for the maximum y value. Well, that's up here at 8. So the maximum value, the highest value that my graph has is 8. What's the absolute minimum value? Well, there's actually not one. Because there's an arrow going down forever. And because the graph never stops going down, there is not one lowest point. So there's no minimum. Or no absolute minimum. On what interval is the graph less than zero? So again, like we talked about the last, less than zero here would be the part of the graph under the x-axis. Now that starts happening at four right here, and I'm going under the axis from four on. So I would say from four to infinity, I'm less than zero. Now, just for fun, if that had said less than or equal to zero, that would be tricky because you would still have that interval from four to infinity with a bracket, but you would also be equal to zero at zero here. So you'd also have to include the and the x value of zero. That you don't, you know, that's not what it's asking, but I wanted to point that out. That if I said less than or equal to, I would have to include this other x intercept as well as that one. All right, I think that's it for this video.